So, today we're going to do a psychobilly quiff. Now, the psychobilly quiff is not for everybody. The but it's definitely a haircut you as a barber should know. I don't find it one of the hardest haircuts to be honest because basically it's just a flat top with side shaving away just a little bit longer. The psychobilly quiff is the haircut that goes with a musical sub genre which is called psychobilly. Really? Yes. Which basically started in the 80s and is kind of a mix between rockabilly and punk rock music. You know, psychobilly is all about fun. Yeah, it's not political, it's not, it's just music, you know, to have fun too. It's about all the horror movies, it's about, it's, it's, it's a real cool form of music. But uh, I'm gonna show you guys today how we're gonna do it. Now, Wilfred here, he has his quiff like, he had it for, for a long time, so for me it's kind of easy to find it back. You can see the old shape is still there. So all I got to do at this point is take the long hair and that'll tell me exactly how much hair I'm going to take away. Yeah. I'm going to start by removing the hair on the sides, going really, really super short. Now, Psychobilly Quiff is, of course, like the music itself, a bit of a crossover between the traditional Mohawk haircut, as known by some of the, the punk rockers, and the pompadour as made famous by rockabilly now there are different kinds of psychobilly clips what i'm going to do today is i'm pretty much going to go fluent from the crown area i might take out a little piece on the crown area just to accentuate the shape a little bit and to be honest to kind of hide the spot here a little bit Sorry about that, buddy. <laughs> right? Um, but you also got like um, the bigger psychobilly wedge, as it is known, you know? So, um, which is kind of more, you can actually have like uh, the psychobilly hawk, which is a quiff that starts in the nape area and just goes up all the way from the nape area. Uh, usually, it's worn in kind of a aggressive manner. So we really want the side really quick to go forward. See, removing hair pretty fast again. The hair tells me what to do. Now, I've posted a video of me doing a haircut on Wilfred before and that movie is actually one of our Facebook hits. You know, it's been watched like uh, two and a half million times on YouTube. It's been watched about nine million times on Facebook. Facebook, what's to you? Yeah, you know, that thing that came before Instagram and after MySpace. Well, the thing is, I never really done a full step-by-step -step of the Psychobilly Quiff, so it's gonna be fun. Um, I have to tell you guys, as much as I love all the nice, uh, reactions that we got on our step-by-step -step videos. I mean, I like YouTube, right? I like doing these videos, you know, in a weird way. I think we kind of, well, you know, I think we kind of owe it because I believe that, first of all, education should be available for everybody, right? And man, I kind of wish, in a way, that we had YouTube back in my days, like 120 years ago, but um, 
You know, um, you can actually learn a lot from watching videos, but just to be clear, you cannot learn everything from watching just a YouTube video. Every hair is different, right? So I can show you a couple of techniques. My advice is definitely to check out other barbers on YouTube because there are so many amazing tutorial videos out there. And you know, you gotta take tips and combine what you see with what you already learned. But, you know, it is just, to give you guys some pointers. And I especially kind of hope that we're helping out, you know, kids that are in school or, you know, they want to have that one little tip. You never know who you're going to inspire. Yeah, so, I mean, it's the same for you guys, right? You never know what's going to happen in the future. And, well, I remember when I first saw a shaving video of my friend uh, Farzad from Canada and I was blown away man, I love, I love that shit. But um, oh where was I going, oh yeah, this is why I started this whole blah blah blah. I'm actually not allowed to blah 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 too much because Yellow was like Rob. These videos are getting too long. Yella is the one behind the camera. Well, sorry, Yella, but if there is one thing I don't like about YouTube, you know, and again, thank you for all the nice comments, but the last time I posted uh, the psychobilly quiz of Paco here, there were a lot of a-holes on the internet too, going like, oh, stupid hair, blah, blah. Dude, there are no stupid haircuts, first of all. Second of all, let me kill Mr. off Motorhead once said, if you think you're too old to rock and roll, you are. Yeah, because you know, I think it's very, very important. Rock and roll, man, it's, it's a way of thinking. It's a way of life. It is not about who drinks the most or who stays up awake the latest, you know? It's not just music. It's a walk and talk in life, right? And I think, you know, there is so much rock and roll out there because I think that rock and roll, man, it's like, it's like having the balls to stand out and walk your own walk. And it's not in your hair or in a leather jacket, you know? It's, it's like not, giving a shit about what the rest of the world thinks and just walk your walk in life. And that can be anything, right? So, sorry, but I, I really wanted to tell this. Because I know there's gonna be assholes again, like oh, oh, oh. Right, I think a Psych Billy quiz. When I saw a Psych Billy walking through my town for the very first time, and I was like a kid, you know, I was just blown away. I was like, man, that guy looks hardcore. So, I don't know if there's a little break in the video, it probably is because Yella stopped filming to tell me, Rob, nobody gives a fuck. Keep on doing the haircut. So here we go, I keep on doing the haircut. As you can tell, I just removed a lot of hair. Now I've added some of our Ruzel grooming tonic, which is gonna make it easier to, uh, to hold up. And I'm gonna dry the hair with a blow dryer. It's one of these things. Oh, wait a minute, everything's falling apart. <laughs> See, man, I'm having fun doing this video, man. I'm having fun doing, doing the hair of, of, of my client here. These are the jobs, man. People are taking all this barbering shit way, way, way too fucking serious. Right? Never forget why you started doing this in the first place. To have a little fucking fun. Here we go. As you can tell, I dried the hair. You don't have to make a big fuzz out of it. This is just your first base of the cut. So, dried it hot, use my vent brush, right? And basically, well, you definitely gotta watch if there's any cow legs or whatever, but basically you just dry it into the back, to the crown area. So from front till back, 
And then when it's backwards, you go from right to left. And then left to right. So you really want you really want the hair to stand up, but this is not the final haircut yet. So here we go. Okay. Next step, take off bulk. If you want to know more about the flat top comb, the normal comb, taking away bulk, I suggest you watch the video that we did on the flat top. Because if you watch the flat top video and you shave away all this hair, you're basically there too. But, so I'm not going to tell the whole story with the flat top comb, because again, I'm not allowed to talk in this video. <laughs> yeah, look. I'm just going to take away a little bit of bulk. Now the trick is, you got to watch the shape of the skull. Because with the cycle quiv, you want it to be aggressive. So we're going to use the shape of the skull to move it into the front, right? We really want it to go up. Now, we're going to take away a little bit of hair. Uh, clipper set to zero. Yeah, and I'm going to... You can use whether you want to use the flat top comb or a normal comb. I, I th I'm, I'm not very interested in that discussion right now. Again, if you want to know my opinion, watch the flat top video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shove that flat topper all in. Yeah. And I'm going to take away bulk. Yeah. Hop. Hop. If you find it hard, I hear this a lot, that your, your clipper might slide over the comb without taking hair off. This is the trick. You, you pull it in and then you kind of pull it back to the front. See? In. Because then the hair stands out straight of your comb. So, that is your basic shape. We're going to continue to perfect that shape. As you can tell, see? This is just my sketch, but you can already see the shape emerge, right? So I'm going to take away this hair here on the crown. See, putting my comb flat on the crown area. Yeah, and after that, I start with putting it to half, so I open it up. And I'm kind of going to blend it in. Now the trick is, see, this is your highest point in the crown, so make sure your clipper is charged. Really rub. Yeah, but don't follow the shape of the skull because you're going to take away the sides and we're going to need them later. Yeah, so see, here you got your shape. Yeah, if it inzoom in. See, I'm holding it straight. See, that is your basic shape of your psycho quiff. As I told you guys, it's really not that hard. Just make sure that you don't go too short on the sides. Yeah? Of course, you can always, if you decide to go a little bit shorter later, it's not a problem. See, I want to take out this little piece of the crown area, but as I told you guys before in all the other videos, Subscribe to our channel and watch them all. But you know what? I did basically it's the same thing. I always leave a little bit of hair to play with because you never know if you might get a good idea, idea, have with haircut and it's too bad if the hair is gone. You might want to do, you know, sometimes you're 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 cutting a nape and all of a sudden you see a certain kind of movement in the hair. You know? 
the hair is fun to play with. The moment you take your clipper and take it all off, it's too bad, man, because you cannot play with it again. See, what I'm gonna do now is, because this area shines through a little bit, because, you know, well, <laughs> oh God, I need a haircut. I work in a, in, in a barber shop that's, that's pretty known, but you know, horrible. Here we go. See, I'm gonna take out this area just to spice things up a little bit. See, so all of a sudden, that spot that is just a little thinner becomes part of the haircut, making it even a little bit more aggressive. Okay, you can obviously tell that it's way too long over here. See, there's still a little bit of cleaning up to do, but the basic shape is there and pretty fast, right? So now, I want to make the whole thing a little bit more aggressive, yeah? I'm going to pull the hair back and I'm going to go for that classic flat top way of working. See? Now we're getting somewhere. The moment your basic shape is there, all you gotta do is kind of freehand the way you like it. Whenever I do a class, a lot of people at this point are like, oh no, I don't want to use the clippers free and I'm too scared, I'm gonna make a big mistake. I don't really think you're gonna make a big mistake. When you're in doubt, kinda use another finger to find support for the other hand. But you know, what a lot of people don't think about is, your clippers can only cut away a certain amount of hair. So if you really, really want to make a big mistake, you're really going to push it in, right? Because if you just go over it like this, well, yeah, it takes a little bit of practice, but what I do is I really see I start above the hair and I kind of work till I see the hair move. That way I know I'm never taking off too much hair, right? But the only way you're gonna learn to do this is by practicing and trying. Now, if you wanna try and practice, maybe it's a good idea to not just go for your final shape yet, but leave it a little bit longer and practice that freehand technique a little bit so you get more secure with your hand and eye coordination and clipper work. But again, don't be too scared. I mean, it's a fun job, right? And
There you go. Okay, next step, we're gonna take a little bit of the Rusal fiber gel. Just a little bit. See, Little Fred's hair here is, it's not super thick, right? It's got a nice implant, but I'm just gonna use a little bit to make it even more sticky. This is something you really gotta learn by trying, right? Whatever product you wanna use, whether it's Ruzo or, or another brand, I think it's really important that you know which products are going to work on the right hair, right? Because product knowledge, come, you know, you cannot do, you know what, you cannot, if you buy a can of paint, you got to buy a brush, right? And I consider my products as my tools. I find them just as important as my clippers or my scissors, right? Because I cannot do this haircut without the right product, see? So you also gotta know how much to use. Sometimes, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm looking for product here. No, I'm actually looking for my brush. Brush, brush, brush. Um, if you use too much product on fine hair, it's gonna work against you. Right, so right now there are so many people doing amazing pompadours on, on Instagram and stuff. There's some spectacular shit going on in Asia at the moment. They're doing like, but I can tell you one thing. The secret of all those haircuts is in the right blow drying and the right product to blow dry with. Because you want it to stand up but you don't want it to become so sticky, you cannot use your comb in it anymore. So a little bit of the fiber gel. Gonna take away all this extra hair and... Uh, So I clean everything up with the foiler. Again, if you want to use a straight razor, be my guest, use whatever you're the most comfortable with. Now I'm going to take out the last details of the shape and then we're going to go to the perfecting of the haircut. See, check all your lines, check again. Make sure that you check balance in front of the mirror, yeah? I know that a lot of barber shops have their chairs not facing the mirror, it's the same in our place because you want to enhance that conversation between your patrons but with flat tops I really suggest that you turn your chair towards the mirror every now and then just to check the balance of the haircut. Now that's starting to look pretty good and fast right? Okay, now I'm going to show you the secret trick I'm going to use the strongest pomade that we got. It's quite matte. Don't take too much. Yeah, that should be enough. Okay, so we're going to divide this thoroughly. Okay, if you want to do high hair uh, with long hair, especially with the ladies, if you want to put it up, you use a technique called back combing. Yeah, it's taking your comb and a piece of hair and then go like we all know this. Now, 
Back in the days when I still had hair, I used to walk around with a mohawk or a psychobilly quiff too. There are, there are multiple tricks to put your hair up. One of the most important ones though, is you gotta understand that a lot of punks, psychobillies, don't put their hair up, they put it down. And the trick is, because you, right now, if I wanna put it up, I have to fight gravity, right? Because a big quiff or mohawk is gravity defying hair. The trick is, you back on the whole thing, you put your mirror on the floor, and you work down, right? So all of a sudden, gravity is working for you, instead of against you, yeah? So, I'm gonna show you, this is basically how people do it at home. So if you ever see those guys walking around with, oh shit, with hair like this, yeah? Turn the process around. Now, I'm gonna show you a technique, it's not backcombing, I call it scrunching. So with my product, now, you gotta, of course, respect your client. You don't want it to hurt your client, but you should really put some power into it. See, I'm holding his head, his skull, because again, you don't want to give somebody a whiplash. But you definitely want to get that product in there. And you really want to have a lot of knots in the hair. This is how you're gonna make it firm. As you can also see, I'm making it wide. Yeah, I want to have a lot of hold in the hair. So, what you got here, it's a bit of an alternative way of backcombing. Works just as good, right? See, there's a lot of knots in the hair. Well, you'll see this is a really nice trick to work with. Yeah? So, a lot of knots. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take a four comb, right? And then I'm gonna kinda Pull the nuts out. <laughs> pull my nuts out? <laughs> I won't pull my nuts out, that's a promise. Not today. See, so you pull them out, you pull them up. Yeah? If you want to give advice to your client, he can do exactly the same thing. Scrunch, crunch, 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 crunch. But then, again, put a mirror on the floor and just go like this, take a little bit of hairspray, poof, hair will be up, yeah? Well, you see what's happening here? Yeah, you're really seeing the shape of the haircut. You use a flick of the wrist. See, if you pull it out, just be careful, yeah? You can put a little force in there, but you never want to hurt your client. See, once, your, once the haircut is up, you're going to use another freehand technique to take off all the hairs that are still standing out. When you're happy with your shape, I'm gonna do what I always do. I'm gonna bash it with the blenders. <laughs> yeah. I love my blending scissors. There's a lot of shit going on on Instagram and the internet about blenders and thinners. Hey, I'm all good with that, man. The whole thing is, it doesn't matter what kind of tools you use, it's how you use them. You can screw up hair with normal scissors, you can screw up hair with clippers, 
you can screw up hair with a lawnmower and you know really it doesn't matter for me it works for me it's the perfect tool so what I'm gonna do now is see I'm gonna take up those sides and I'm really gonna go for my details see and because the teeth of my blending scissors are so close together I am gonna take away about 100% of the hair just not in straight lines because I have always believed that straight perfect lines don't really work for hair it's too much of an organic product it is that little bit of texture it is actually going to make the hair look more precise, more straight even. So, see, here you got your shape. What I'm doing now is I'm taking a brush with quite firm uh, uh, bristles. I don't know. I'm a Dutchie, remember? Bristle, bristles, whatever. Close together, and we're just going to touch it really soft and that is how you glue see those last hairs this is actually a tool that those rockabillies would use back in the 60s well not just the rockabillies man this is when they had those longer sides and you really want to slick them down glue them all together boom yeah and again, it make, you know, I'm gonna throw in my pink scissors because I haven't used them and they go so nice with the pants. Yeah, so my uh, Mizutani, uh, my Mizutani custom made bloody butcher flamingo pink scissors. Well, these are sharp as a katana and they go through hair as butter. See, setting in those final details moving the client again to the mirror okay repeating the same thing on the other side of the hair now it's really that scrunching technique with the Rusal extreme hold it's doing all the work here Yeah, go over it. If you want, if you want to put hair up, and you want to have more of a uh, that it goes more into the front. Whether it's a psycho quiv or a pompadour, remember let gravity do the work. See, if you put your client a little bit, all of a sudden, forces of nature. Are gonna work for you. Now, I really, really you know, you might have thought that tonight was not as serious as the other step-by-step -step videos. That might be true. But, uh, I gotta tell you one thing, man. This video was pretty much the one that I was the most myself. Because this is where I come from. These are my roots. This is what I love to do. And... This is what I'll be doing forever, you know. So here you go. The Psychobilly Quiv as done by the Bloody Butcher at the Old School Academy in Rotterdam. If you want to know more, go to www.schorenbarbier.nl. Guys, I'm sorry if I was a little excited, but I, I really, really love doing this haircut. So I really hope that you kind of get the energy that I was feeling tonight. 
if we did so, enjoy trying your freehand techniques and enjoy doing cycle quiz, man. Thank you so much. See you next time. And don't forget to rock and roll.